so this this is a, a duo that we've been hearing about, right? With Lulu seeing more attention uh, very, very recently. Like, do we see Lulu Jinx? Do we see Lulu Kogma? If you watch Vedius' picks to watch, you'd know that this was on our radar heading into the tournament. And I like the idea from Pentanet. Now, it's always a difficult question you have to ask yourself when you are the, the team that is not favored in matchup. Do you go the scaling route and basically dare your opponents? Can you close out the game before we come online, online and overrun you in the team fights? Or do you say, we want to invest everything in the early game. A lot of analysts will say, oh, you want to cheese them in the early game. You want to hit them with a punch they don't quite expect. Well, Pentanet two games in a row yesterday with the Fiddlesticks and the Jinx and today with the Lulu Kogma are saying that they want to try and outscale and outfight RNG later on. That is a really bold call um, to make, especially because Pentanet have not had the strongest laning phases here on the MSI stage. Um, we pushed back both of their games yesterday, so we already start feeling just a little bit nervous. And that Kaiser was eventually locked in on the third pick for RNG as we jump into phase two bans. Ari removed from the pool. Nautilus is what Ming wielded yesterday. And I wonder if we'll see yet another support ban make that matchup just a little bit more comfortable for the Cogmore. And of course, if he's going to be sitting back, he needs a lot of protection and peel. You've already got a lot of mobility from that Kai'Sa and yeah. Lee in combination. Yeah, we're looking at like an Alistar, Aurel, these types of champions to go ahead and put Ming on in the, the support position because you already have like a Lee Sin, right? That obviously the displacement effect of his kick can be very threatening up against Kog'Maw on the back line. We still don't know yet where that Lee Sin is going to end up, which solo lane that will find itself in with the Udyr way. You almost have to expect that he's going to be rocking that for himself. And and interesting to see RNG banning away the Olaf away from Pabu. Make sure he can't get on that right now. Uh, Pentanet, do fe it feels like they need something out of the mid jungle to try and stabilize this Lulu Kogma on the bottom side, especially if we see Ming on a heavy engage support, because once you put Gala and Ming on some playmaking tools, if Wei decides to play what he did more in the finals of the yes. LPL as opposed to the regular season, where it was much more about the bottom lane, well, when you see a Lulu Kogma, that sends you a giant target. You want to hit that lane. Dive, 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 and the, the Leona will definitely enable that play style. And you mentioned there uh, that RNG as they were closing out the spring playoffs, they changed their play style a little, where Wei was able to spend more time and invest more resources into the duo of Gala and Ming. But during the course of the regular season, it was all about Wei and Cryon. The reason I really like that is it already demonstrates the versatility, the experience that they do have, and the different approaches that they can bring to the game. So now as the response, we've got the Volibear locked in as well as the Orianna. So Volibear jungle, not top, and we'll see what this final mid pick will be. Yeah, I, I like this, right? We were sort of saying that Pabu yesterday on the Fiddlesticks, it felt like it, it put his team at a big disadvantage because he's just trying to clear through his jungle once he fell behind there too. All of his lanes were getting pushed in and he wasn't able to find any sort of room to look for a gank especially around a powerful mid laner like a Lee Sin. This time, the lane's a little bit more passive from Pentanet. We'll see what that top lane matchup does end up being, but Pabu has the ability to influence the early game and make sure he can show up where Wei wants to attack. It'll be interesting to see how practiced and comfortable Pentanet look on these champions. Volibear only played twice by Pabu. Chaz on the Orianna. This year, this will be the second professional game that he's played on stage and into the Ori, into the composition that Pentanet have put together. It is going to be the Silas. There are a number of very powerful ultimates to steal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think everyone knows Silas stealing a Nar ultimate is absolutely terrifying. There's so many threats that can be thrown towards the Kogma in the back line in these fights. Now, you do have the Oriana who can offer some shielding. The Lulu, of course, going to be super high value for Praedith. But at the same time, you have very powerful lanes for RNG to work through. Every single lane from RNG looked good up against Pentanet yesterday and you have Zhao Hu on the Lee Sin, a champion that I feel like we've seen picked a whole lot in this tournament, banned sometimes too, but it hasn't popped off to the full extent just yet. We'll see what Zhao Hu can do with it in his hands. Well, I have a lot of expectation for Zhao Hu to pop off on this particular pick. It's one that was talked about, the rumors from scrims, from the development of the meta here into MSI, and now Xiaohu and RNG have already got a win under their belts. They'll be looking to pick up the second as they take on Pentanet. Reminder again, quadruple round robin for the teams here. And between Pentanet and UOL, one of those two is most likely to follow up RNG. Let's see if any surprises can happen. As you can tell, we're just about loading up onto the Rift. And let's see where Xiaohu and RNG will go. Now, we talked about the expectations for Pentanet and the fact that 
they do have the scaling comp. They do want to buy time. They do want to put themselves in a position where Oriana, where Cogmore needs time and items to build up. They cannot afford any early mistakes yet against this composition that RNG put together. Yeah, and you know, we saw uh, yesterday one of the most criticized things uh, in Pentanet's early game was Pabu's early jungle pathing. Went for the full clear, then was worried he was in getting invaded on his bot side, ended up not resetting, and well, with the vision that was given into his jungle, Wei was able to sort of do a dance around, invade him on the top side. So the almost, the, the fear of losing camps caused Pabu to lose even more. And uh, that's certainly something we don't want to see from them today, especially with a little bit more stabilizing lanes, right? Like nothing from Pentanet don't need to like pop off in this early game. I think that Pabu's main plan is going to be looking towards top lane, perhaps. You, you, you figure Lee Sin versus Nar, especially with Nar uh, pushing, perhaps, in this matchup. If his lane ever gets frozen against him, that can be pretty deadly. If you're ever mini Nar versus the Lee Sin, if an Udyr comes up around that top side, you do have to be a little bit careful. Are you at all surprised at how much Nar we've seen, despite some of the nerfs? Or were you anticipating it to be this level of priority. I mean, ultimately, like top laners uh, have a specific breed of champions. I feel like they always look for they they want picks that are usually lane dominant and can win the majority of their matchups, uh, and then also have some pretty big team fight influence as well, right? So that's why we see a lot of uh, Nar Renekton too for his mid game team fights. Like these types of picks, you're pretty much going to be okay with no matter what. Uh, Nar uh, a little bit more vulnerable perhaps than something like that Renekton. We are going to see both junglers pathing up towards the top side early on, and perhaps. Perhaps something goes down up there. Well, let's see what Wei can do. Had a huge influence in the games thus far as Predith will step forward, start auto attacking at level one. Little bit of return damage, Love but it. so far it feels like Pentanet will get the better of that trade. Yeah, that's the thing. Rocking a Lulu plus Kogma, you see with the, the W level one there, Predith does a whole lot of damage. And uh, well, if Ming and RNG want to contest in the 2v2, Ming has to be diving in. That's not something you can do so well at level one. So they do have the push on the bottom side. And you know, also people are going to think about the Kogma and they'll think like hard scaling. Well, it's not as uh, slow to come online here. Pushing forward, Kryon's got Chaz down to 200 hit points, below 100, flash oh forward, not enough just yet. One tower shot would have, uh, would have allowed Chaz to turn that out. That's really surprising from Kryon because I, I think most people would, would have thought there he needs an extra auto attack, thinking he could maybe get that in after that empowered auto, but uh, a poor read by him, thinking he could get the kill, and Chaz doesn't even have to use his flash. Chaz also has teleport, so even taking this early trade, he's just gonna be spamming that one key, getting those corrupt potions stacks up and now Kryon is playing a melee champion flashless who has to step up to farm and it's versus a volibear bear level three Ooh, not he was spotted though missing pings on that bully okay Kryon's aware of this will cheat towards the bottom of the lane and Pabu unable to take advantage of the flashless Kryon but definitely signaling the intent here from Kryon in this middle lane level two all in and sending the flash way will now chase onto Pabu as the teleport will be channeled from bio panther I feel like Pabu can just walk his way out. Yeah, Wei should be able to get this. He has level four. We'll smite that away, and now wants to fight this. And this is around. Kryon jumps in. We'll be able to get so much damage for first blood secured by Wei. Turning the attention now over towards Chaz, as well as Biopanther. He gets one back. Chaz gets the double buffs, and he's being chased down. Kryon waiting for the cooldowns. Needs the stun. Flash away from the Sonic Wave. Kryon's low on mana. Gets Whoa! caught underneath the tower. The tower shot's not oh. going to be enough just yet. Kryon manages to escape, and RNG take three kills. That was disgusting. I've never seen a Silas E hit from that far away. Kryon is able to find it, and it's after Pentanet opt into the fight down in levels. They think they had the upper hand, but now RNG are going to take it all. Double crabs, three kills to just the one of Pentanet. A thousand eight hundred gold lead, and look at the mini map. Bio Panther TP's in to then commit as Chaz and Pabu feel like they have the upper hand. Oh man, looking on your screen right now, Pabu's looking for a topside gank. Okay, not enough just yet. The Sonic Wave and Resonating Strike combo from Shao, who gets some damage onto Bio Panther, and just an easy maul from Pabu picks up a reply kill. So PGG, they'll at least pick something up in reply, but this is a little worrying because this is a team composition that needs time. Chaz has no flash. The Zenith Blade connects, and so does all the follow up CC. Wait, man, just pick up another. Yeah, basically coming out of that skirmish on the top side of the river, both teams were setting up a play. RNG were actually hovering around this mid lane for even longer than Pabu was going for the gank top side, and ultimately it's just so lanes where you look to attack and I love seeing Ming get out of that bot lane roaming to mid. He'll also love to roam topside too, especially when Zhao Hu is having a good game. So 
if RNG, I mean, already with so many summoner spells burnt, already with a 1.3k gold lead, you expect them to not let up, to make Ming and Wei continue to attack these solo lanes. There's no doubt about that. Looking at how Kryon has been in Chaz's face the entire time, Looking at the champions they've put together as well, they want to go forward. Oh no. And Sin will be able to follow up that Q and start to back away. Look at the wave right now, though. There's so many range creeps in the top side from Biopanther. It's pushing away from him, and Jahu always is threatening, jumping on forward. That's why Jahu can sort of walk past the minion waves. He sees Pabu exactly where he is. He sees where Decoy is too in that middle lane. So he's fine to continue to try and zone Biopanther off of CS. And now you see the response from Pabu and Chaz making the way towards top side. Biopanther was is stacked up this wave and they can threaten to dive. Zenith Blade will be able to catch and pray it. He's going to use the cleanse to get away and not enough damage just yet, but instantly pushing him back. And there was no dive attempt taken top. Yeah, and the problem is, right, top lane is already kind of difficult to dive, especially with Crying moving over. He has level six, so he could steal away an ult from Pabu or Bio Panther before they even have access to it themselves. And Bio Panther can't really, or Pabu rather, can't really threaten going for the dive. He doesn't know where Wei is, with Praetith taking such a chunk in the bot lane. If he shows, he risks giving a dive opportunity over to RNG in bot lane. Xiao, who just hit level six as well. Dragon Strike is available to him, steps forward, lands the Q, some reply damage from Wei. Gonna get pinned against the wall with the non taken out before Xiao, who can even use that kick. Now Wei's running for his life, sidesteps the boulder toss. While that was going on, there's a dive in the bottom lane. Yeah, they didn't even need extra players. It's just a 2v2 straight up, and they get a Another kill, RNG styling in the 2v2 bot side, but Pentanet were able to pick up one top. They did indeed grab one. Xiaohu holding onto that kick for so incredibly long ended up costing him. Biopanther secures the knockdown into the wall. And I wasn't watching the picture and picker. Gala and Ming just tower dove and get the double kill. Well, I mean, we're looking for another fight on the Scuttlecrab. Pentanet twice in a row getting blasted in the topside river. That is not what you want to see. And to answer the question of how that dive even worked in the ball lane, it's because Gala and Ming in the 2v1, when Deco Decoy was showing mid lane, they took a great trade. Praetith is already 50% HP heading into this play. And RNG are like, wait a second, that's not enough. Your shield are not good enough, even through the exhaust. Gala is able to proc his passive and finish off that kill. And then Decoy, with all these minions, he's just a sitting duck. They lose so much. Now a 20 CS lead almost for the bot lane 2v2 of Gala. And not only the kills going over to RNG, but the denial of the CS, the denial of the XP, it is gigantic. It's a 3,000 gold lead already at seven and a half minutes. And reminder that yesterday, Pentanet also lost to RNG. We were ideating and theorizing how and what Pentanet may need to do to uh, adapt today. And this composition is going to have such an incredibly difficult time stabilizing long enough to be powerful to contest RNG. The credit I will give to Pentanet is even in their game yesterday versus RNG, they, they were hopelessly behind 10k gold, but they, they, they fought their way to the death. Yeah. Right? They're, they're not a team that's going to slow down, let you roll them over. That's why they're from level three fighting in the top side river. It's not working for them uh, very clearly. RNG are out to an advantage, but it's not a team that's going to go easily in the night. This is a team that is going to fight you to the very end and uh, continue to challenge RNG even down so much. I mean, we also saw yesterday Payne coming back from a gigantic disadvantage. Now, I do think the disparity in player abilities uh, is a little different here today. Yeah, I, you don't want to look at the jungle CS right now, guys. Stay away. That is ridiculous. Way currently sitting 3-1-1, one, one, significantly further ahead. Looking at his stats from yesterday, another fantastic performance. 33% damage share. You got to appreciate ridiculous. the small mechanics, too, as Gala wards through the wall, and Pop is like, wait, I'm trying to set up a gank, guys. Well, no. Wei continues to dominate just like yesterday, and, well, it, it comes as Pabu continues to force these ganks, right? That's why you go for the Volibear, to try and have an early game impact, but now Wei is literally doubling his CS at nine minutes. Two level advantage, three kills to his name, and, uh, well, on the tank, uh, Udyr, sometimes you get to ha have a little bit of extra fun. If we actually go away from the gold for just a second, 1,200 is a lot, and that's enough to upgrade into a Mejai from that Dark Seal eventually. That is ridiculous. That is such a swag move from Wei. And also, it's a gigantic, um, uh, let's say, message to myself after I was ragging on Udia just a moment ago. But I mean, look, RNG have just played this exceptionally well. They've taken every single fight in every single lane. And right now, they're currently outskilling wow. PGG. Yeah, they definitely are. You know, I, I will say, uh, Pentanet were in very good spirits in the pregame. Like both teams are actually uh, having a have a bit of back and forth, teaching some of the uh, the uh, the Chinese solo Q meta of like the six 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 spam, the seven seven seven. Look it up. Uh, you know, they were they were they were trying to educate the other side and uh, and keeping spirits.
third side. Once they actually got into game, uh, I do have the Observer up and all chat. They were also all spamming solo bolo. <laughs> and uh, even some European memes being I love chucked it. in there. I love it. For some fun. As now RNG crest 10 minutes. They've got Ocean Drake. They've got Herald. They've got seven kills to three. Way and Cryant going to stare down Chaz and Pabu. It is a three-level difference between Wei and Pabu as Cryan's going to go all the way forward. He's held on to that hijack for now. Wei will get backed up by Ming. The ultimate is available if the engage wants to go in. Shockwave is here for Cryan as well. Oh. PGG respect. They back it, away. Look, you think it's about the Raptor camp. It's about the rest of it because Praetith is isolated. So RNG are just attacking into the jungle, trying to zone Pabu and Decoy away because the threat of a dive is ever looming. There's a giant wave there. And uh, well, Gala's going for it solo. Oh, this what? Is ridiculous! Gala not gonna be able to pick up the kill. The wild growth from Decoy saving his AD carries life. <gasps> but that is insane from Gala. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's just something you can do. Uh, Chaz was thanking uh, Gala for carrying him in solo queue last night in the pregame lobby, but uh, definitely not thanking him after he almost one v ones prayed it underneath the bot lane tower. Absolute monstrosity there, and Wei will pick up the second Drake of the game. Pabu just trying his best to clear the wave in bot lane before they lose more plates. I mean, super important to call out that Gala has got 24 professional games on Kaiser in the LPL. He played one yesterday, he played it today. If there is anyone that is going to know the limits of damage, the ability to dive pick up kills, it's going to be this man. And it comes from a region that has produced some of the world's best AD carries. It was a Shao Hu earlier saying, um, yeah, Gala, just uh, replace Uzi. You know, to, like, <laughs> Easy. It's, it's no big deal, no stress. But when you do see plays like that, you can see just how fantastic Gala is at uh, the champion and at League. Yeah, and obviously, like, Gala, like, the, the new kid on the block has to step in, in into that shadow a little bit, too. But, like, for Xiao Hu and Ming, who've been on this team for a while, roll swaps, you know, trying to do their best after losing that star player, too. It's about uh, redefining yeah. the RNG and saying it's not just about some sort of star player. And obviously, this is the very early stage of MSI, but we've seen really great moments out of every single player on this roster in just two days. Yeah, and I mean, RNG, one of the pre-tournament favorites. You know, back on the international stage, been a while for the squad. They do have uh, some trophies in their cabinet as well, and big legacy to live up to. And right now, they are just styling. We're approaching the 15-minute mark. Wei continues to dominate Pabu. Three-level advantage is maintained. Shockwave comes out from Chaz, but he's running low on mana. Crying with the gigantic heal. Turns it back around to Chaz and almost picks oh, up the solo Wei. kill. Wei oh. will step in. Chilling smite and a bird slap to the oh, round two to pick Fight. it up. Flash forward from Gala. Going to be able to pick up the Captain Ray. They're not going to be enough damage just yet. And one more shot secures it. And another tower dive. This time around, Biopanther making his way in. He'll be able to pick it up with the boulder toss to the face. There is no honor from pentanet.gg. What is this? Last time there's a wild growth thrown to save Prade at this time they're teleporting down what happened to a good old-fashioned 1v1 well right now it's a 2v0 in the mid lane rng just bashing down the turret so while pentanet do fire back get the kill on to gala well they're losing a whole lot for it in the mid lane i mean they really are this will be the first tower secured in just a moment and then we'll extend rng's lead even further 7,000 gold by 13 minutes i was also taking a look at some of the the overall stats from yesterday, average game time was 28 minutes, 59 seconds. Very, very fast games, relatively one-sided. So obviously, we do have a lot of very strong teams in the first group stage of MSI, putting on fantastic oh. performances. Shahu two levels up on uh, Pabu, not going to be able to pick up the kill just yet, and Praetith just wants to farm. He's down 40 CS, and he simply cannot get away from RNG. A ward hop from Shahu, and he will get run down. With a couple extra bullets. Got some RNG observers today trying to hide the death from Zhao Hu while, while they get the 2v1 kill on Freight of the bot lane. I like it. All right, well, Turret is going to end up following too. And you know what? Uh, it's It's been a day for Lee Sin. It's been a couple of days for Lee Sin. One and three while the rest of his team's popping off. Does Zhao Hu meet the mark for what you wanted to see from a laning Lee Sin? Because you've gotten one and two from yesterday. I think you were a little. Uh, let's say critical of what we saw yesterday. You know what? I'm going to say that this isn't the game to, to really judge the validity of the Lee Sin in lane pick. You know what I will say, though, is that uh, this game we are seeing the Gore Drinker, and I think that's what we saw a couple times uh, the, uh, the other days, uh, yesterday Basically. as well, yeah. too. But um, I was actually talking with Zale about this, and and I think we both kind of like the, the Eclipse pick. Not in every game, but when you see some squishy targets on the other side, I think Eclipse is pretty sweet on that Lee Sin. And uh, I mean, when you're off to an early lead, that's what I would have done, personally. I would have liked the Eclipse, go for the one-shots on the Kog'Maw every time, but 
clearly Zhao Hu knows something I don't. I mean, I also wonder if it'll just be player preference as well, uh, composition dependent. Like, we'll have to see whether or not Lee Sin continues to be prevalent, continues to show his face. We're expecting Zhao Hu not to be allowed to play that uh, Lucian, as it's something that he's made such a name for himself on. And of course, look, this is how the game against RNG was expected for Pentanet. But when we look at this group, Pentanet and the Unicorns of Love, one of those uh, teams will be advancing through. So that's really the do or die. And ultimately, for both Pentanet and UOL, there's a couple extra games against one of the best teams in the world. So I really want to see how they continue to adapt and develop. I don't think this comp was the right direction. And we've seen just how good RNG are at uh, punishing everything and creating opportunities. Xiao, who's not going to be able to land the Sonic Wave. It is interesting, too, when you, like, when you look at the two leagues. Obviously, LCO came in the latest of any league this year with the OPL shutting down and trying to figure out that situation coming into 2021. Uh, the LPL plays like more games than pretty much anyone. Yep. You know, best of threes, so many. Like, their, play, their playoffs are super long, too. RNG ended up uh, dropping a series to FPX before they even made it back to the finals to get that rematch in, which they did eventually win. So a lot of uh, experience just within the last few months for RNG that Pentanet will be hard to match. And also remember that Pentanet, a number of the Oceanic players uh, got picked up by LCS teams as well. So that also has an impact. Ming chucked out an exploratory solar flare there. I didn't quite see if there was any further backup from RNG, but because of the control they've had, three towers secured, they pushed their wards so deep into the Oceanic jungle. This will allow the third dragon to be picked up by RNG. It's an infernal soul. And that is exactly what RNG are going to be looking for with the very high damage comp they've put together. I'm still waiting for uh, the Magi's for Wei. Hasn't yet been uh, upgraded, so I'm a bit disappointed. There. Yeah, I I'm with you, and I'm glad you bring up the Magi's. I was going to say, since like AK Gold lead at 16 minutes, everything looking RNG, I kind of want to go on some item tangents here. Okay. There's been some interesting stuff, right? You know, we already had the Lee Sin, we brought up the, the Magi's, which does need to get upgraded from Wei here. Uh, notice Pabu, obviously struggling a whole lot in this matchup, uh, now having a bit of a dance party with Praedith. You'll love to see it, just leeching some experience from the Kogma, he went for the locket, and uh, I think that is the right choice, uh, believe it or not, here when you are this far behind. Uh, you know, just keep that Kogma alive for two extra seconds versus the Kai'Sa. At the same time, I don't like double Doran's blades from Biopanther. Now, bringing this up at 17 minutes is a bit of a stretch. I get it, guys, but the Omnivamp does not stack. If you want to get another Doran's looking item, go for a call. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of that. Cole, get yourself some extra money if you can get the 100 CS necessary. Well, he has been farming well enough into Xiao Hu's Lee Sin, but the rest of the map has been absolutely obliterated. I mean, Mythics were just picked up their four Chaz on the Ludens, and uh, he's been facing off against a number from RNG. Xiao Hu stepping forward once again. No support this time around. As Pentanet have got three members sitting nearby. And it, this is also an interesting thing to think about is that Obviously, two teams from each of our three groups will advance to the Rumble stage. And every other team will be watching this from RNG. I wonder if this Kai'Sa is going to stop being removed against RNG. Gala is just so incredibly strong on it. And we've seen the impact that he can have. Biopanther will about to gnar out. While that's going on, Wei is pushing on the bottom lane. This tower will survive a few extra seconds, but they can't stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If RNG engage, Pentanet are going to go down. You know what? Pentanet are going to fight. Uh, that's that's what I believe. I don't. I think from watching their game yesterday and them like trying to set up uh, fights around like Drakes and whatnot, hiding in the fog of war for seemingly 60 seconds, while RNG were like, wait a second, why aren't you guys defending your mid turrets? What's going on? If that was any indication, I think they may just end up pulling the trigger, even if it may not end up going super well here. Praetith, of course, did did just finish off Kraken Slayer, so has uh, made it there at the very least. That's going to be a big power spike, but it's simply not enough right now. 10k gold difference. I'm waiting to see when RNG pull the trigger. Uh, where will the tower dive come from? Baron hasn't even spawned yet. The Infernal Soul will be available at 21 and a half minutes. And it is just utter domination here from the LPL. Another base, another failed Mejai's purchase. It's really disappointing here, Way. You know, I, I mean, Kryon's figured it out. Kryon Cry knows what's up. He's, he's already winning the race. He's got almost double the amount of stacks. If he gets a kill, he's going to get twice as many. It's it's uh, it's a bit of a difference there between RNG. Clearly, even with five kills, it is Kryon with the uh, the mental edge picking up that Mejais. I mean, it's a four-level advantage here from mm. Wei over Pabu. Pabu just has not been able to play League of Legends. I mean, his jungle is gone now, too. Like, hey, he doesn't get to farm. Even if, even if camps do spawn that Pentanet are able to take, it's all going to pray to their Chaz. Yeah, it really, really is. Um... I mean, from RNG now, let's take a look how they finish this out. Panther's going to 
Mega Gnar out. They've got so much damage, they can melt Baron if they want to. Bait Pitsa to step forward and turn and engage. If you were going to say, like, a textbook how to finish this game, what would you want RNG to do? Uh, well, just go Baron and invite Pentanet in to fight you. You literally have such an item advantage, like, you can tank that thing for forever with Lee Sin, too. Uh, his W offers so, so much. You just, you know, offer up a fight, Cryin steals a Gnar ultimate, you slam Prey against the wall, and it's over. All right, well, that's what it looks like is happening. RNG pushing the waves, they've set up the Deep Vision, starting to back away and let's see if they commit to either the tower or to the baron pit i think it's gonna be the baron pit i think the control wards in the inventory are relatively telling uh, that they do want to end up making that turnover they can also force a tp out of bio panther and you know because it's infernal rift you're gonna see a pentanet coming from a mile away the teleport does come on through and this will be the fight bio panther needs to get that mega gnar peel away from baron from rng ming's got flash he's got the solar flare as well that's the gnar ult. see if he picks a target. All right, so Kryon has stolen it, decides not to engage just yet. RNG playing this one yeah, a little well, slow. they're just going to go for the Infernal Soul inst instead. Zero risk with that one, 30 seconds away. You will see Wei trying to get into position, see if there's a, a good flank opportunity. Puts that ward down critically uh, underneath the red buff. You'll notice Zhao, who is top lane with a teleport. And one thing that Lee Sin in the jungle doesn't get access to for insects is that TP button. He has to use mechanics. Now, Lee Sin top lane, a very different story. You can just press that teleport and come on in. That's the engage from Pentanet. They've got a small window of opportunity with the numbers advantage. Ming is not yet dead. Solar Flare will come down. Cry and step oh. the Gnar into the wall. Buys enough time for Wei and Xiaohu to arrive into the fray. Ming steps forward, finds a Zenith Blade, picks up a double kill for Gala, the triple kill for Gala, as well as the Sonic Wave into the Resonating Strike, and Gala steps forward into Pabu. This should be the Quadra kill for Gala. Not a Penta this time, but four out of five is still good enough. I feel bad talking trash about, about Lee Sin top laners not needing mechanics when Jahu comes up with a clean insect. Uh, insect. Insect, that's the one on to pray to there. It's not just going to be the Infernal Soul, it's also going to be the Bear for the ultimate cherry on top. And look at the player cams, by the way. With the exception of Chaz, the rest of Pentanet are smiling. They are laughing a little bit. This is obviously a really, really difficult game. And RNG have just completely run away with it. They picked themselves up the Infernal Soul. They're about to pick themselves up the Baron at 22 and a half minutes. And this is going to be that uh, setup here as we're following Gala. The Gala POV, you love to see it. Gets away from the Gnar. It's easy peasy and just autos everything that's in front of him for the time being. You actually notice like uh, all the CC sort of setting up to allow him to hit Pabu and he's got a million dashes too. It's not that hard to chase down and finish off those kills. No, it really isn't. Nicely done by RNG. I'm really sad that he wasn't looking at Lee Sin to, to watch that play. I'm disappointed, Gala. You were, you were focusing on yourself instead of your teammates. <laughs> Team fight as an AD carry, and that's unacceptable. <laughs> I love that. I appreciate that. Well, let's see what Gala and RNG can do now. 15k up. They're going to be playing Unicorns of Love in the next game. Imagine being UOL watching this. Imagine being sheepy and being like, all right, boys, uh, let's, let's, let's take them on, you know? What approach do they go for? And I think UOL, as well as uh, the CIS, have definitely had... I think stronger showings on the international stage than what we have seen from the Oceanic representatives. Wait a second, Prey, this is just behind everyone. <laughs> it's just, this is what we call the rage push in solo queue. You just full send it in a side lane. You're like, guys, I need minions. I need minions. I don't care if they come for me. And RNG are letting them do it. This is sportsman-like behavior. Way did kill the top minion wave, so there's no more support here for Prey did, and this will allow RNG just to push all the way forward. Baron empowered minions, Bio Panther recalling in the bottom lane, and Prey, by the way, is still just farming the jungle. A truly positive gaming experience for RNG. Pradith making sure he can get his Krug camp before the reset comes in. And Trevor, I think this may be all she wrote. Uh, it has been there for a little while, Mr. Frierson. As now Bio Panther has become a little bit tired on that mini now. The Nexus turret will begin to fall. Pradith has rejoined the rest of the squad. And RNG with another two minutes, a minute and a half rather, on that Baron will be able to just push this wave in. Super minions slowly making their way down. Wave steps away for gets the stun. Cryon jumps in with the help of Gala as well. They've got one, they've got two. Bio Panther will be able to make an eye out. Gala will flash away from the shockwave. Nexus turret falls. The Nexus is the focus. Turn the attention back onto Bio Panther. If Gala picks it up, there may be a possibility for Penta, but it's not. It's Cryon that picks it up. And RNG dominate, decimate, deconstruct, and obliterate Pentanet. That was rough. Do you have any more adjectives, Trevor? <laughs> I do, but I'm going to save them for the next okay. game. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Game. I, I think that's probably a good call because RNG are uh, 